what's black and white with zombies all over. Give up? It's Deadlight, which follows in the footsteps of Shadow Complex and Limbo as side-scrolling puzzle platformers that also happen to star in one of Microsoft's Summer of Arcade promotions. It's set in 1986 Seattle for no reason, except maybe to justify the omission of cell phones and the lack of grunge music. You play Randall Wayne, a grisly-looking bastard who keeps having painful flashbacks about his wife and daughter that went missing when the zombie apocalypse broke out. Do you get to wander by a half-destroyed Microsoft campus and swing a fire axe at zombie Bill Gates? Well, no, but there's plenty here to keep you entertained. The first draw is the look of the game. Deadlight is love at first sight, and if it were sold on a disc in stores, I'd tell Microsoft to stick that quote on the box. Seriously, it's hard not to look at this game's incredible art direction and not be 100% impressed. Deadlight's dreary color palette perfectly matches its bleak tone. Audio is equally awesome. I'm jealous at the gravelly, commanding voice of Randall, who narrates the whole game. And the orchestral score never interferes with the gameplay. In fact, it's best experienced by simply going to the main menu and putting your controller down. Cutscenes play out like motion comics, still panels with a little something moving in them, and even Randall's journal looks authentic. The story is great, too. The search for Randall's family keeps the plot moving, the ending had a great twist I didn't see coming, and if you pay careful attention, you'll also learn the origins of the zombie outbreak itself and figure out the real story behind the so-called safe zones. Sure, you'll pick up a pistol or shotgun from time to time, but Deadlight is all about evading the hungry undead before they can pin you down on the ground and chomp your face off. It takes a lot of cues from Limbo in that combat is discouraged, and clearly also draws inspiration from 16-bit classics like Out of This World and Flashback. Standing on a safe point above the zombie horde, you can press Y to whistle and lure them over, then simply leap over their heads, keep running, and don't look back. Still, some areas took a frustrating number of retries thanks to a jumping system that doesn't always send Randall soaring where you want him to go. The fact that he inexplicably can't swim makes it worse. And there are two pretty annoying sections. One overly long part in the sewers that's loaded with tricky jumps, and at the end of the game you'll have to run through a gauntlet that's likely to exhaust your patience as you keep reloading checkpoints. None of this is enough to permanently drag the game down, but it is enough to temporarily put the brakes on an otherwise phenomenal adventure. What the hell? We're alive, you idiots! Alive! We spotted the boy. Hidden collectibles, secrets, and time-based leaderboards are probably enough to convince you to replay Deadlight after you've already finished it, which, by the way, should take you around five hours the first time. It may not be quite as good as Shadow Complex or Limbo, but it belongs in the same breath. This is almost certainly the best game in this year's Summer of Arcade lineup. For more on Deadlight, including the wiki to help you find all the hidden goodies, be sure to click on over to IGN.com.